glory, Father. Hallelujah. For you're worthy, Lord. You're mighty God. Yes, Lord. Oh, we magnify you, Father. We glorify you, Lord. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We give you glory, Father. You're a mighty God. You're more than enough, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Father. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Thank you, Lord. Glory. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory, Father. You, Father. We give you praise, Lord. For your goodness, Lord. You're a mighty God. Hallelujah. Oh, you, Lord. Oh, you, Lord. Oh, Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Draw unto me, says the Lord, and I will draw unto you, says God. I will be big in your life if you'll just trust in me, says God. I love you, says the Lord, and I, I've laid down my life for you, says the Lord. Trust in me, says God, and I will be a God to you, and I will be your strength. Praise you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is good. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Father God, I just pray you take this word, Father, and grain it deep within our hearts. Father, help us to be doers of the word and not just hearers only. I pray that you open our eyes of our understanding. Father, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation to everyone in this house, Father. To every soul, Father, strengthen us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be who you'd have us to be. And I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, turn me to Luke chapter 16. Verses 15 and 16. I've been teaching on kingdom principles. This is basically going to be a review of all the other kingdom principles I've taught on. And I've, been te I've had like seven lessons on this the last couple months. And so we're going to be going back over all these things. The Lord showed me a long time ago. He showed me that the new covenant actually started with John the Baptist. And he showed me these scriptures. And it's a whole new covenant. It's a new and living way. The Bible says that Jesus would come and there would be a new and living way. It's the life of God in us. It's a new and living way. Now we don't have to just be by the works of the flesh, by getting circumcised and doing things like that to be holy. Now we can truly, from the inside out, be holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus came to become part of us. He came, to, he came as a man. He had to become a man so he would have a human spirit, so that he could part and part his spirit, so we could be joined to the Lord so we can both be one spirit in Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus said this. He said, and he said to them, you are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your heart. Say, God knows my heart. Yes, knows my heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination <coughs> in the sight of God. The law and the prophets of the old covenant were until John, John the Baptist. Since that time, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven are used interchangeably in the New Testament. The kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven is preached, and every man presseth. Now that word presseth is a Greek word biazo, and it literally means to seizes and takes it by force. Seizes and takes it by force, presses into it. Okay? Now turn me to Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, that's used the kingdom of heaven instead of kingdom of God, suffereth violence, that's used the same Greek word biazo, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets of the old covenant and the law prophesied until John. 
So the old covenant was until John the Baptist. Now we're a new and living way in Christ Jesus. He imparts power to us, but we have to seize these things and take them by force. He's given us many great and precious promises. It talks about this in 2 Peter chapter 1. It says that through his great and precious promises, we have already been given everything we need for life and godliness. And actually, live that means to live a godly life. You can live a godly life because Jesus is in you. He imparts his power to you, but you have to make the effort yes. to seize these things and take them by force. That's faith. We have to seize the promise of God. Faith cometh to us by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But we have to, when we know that it's God, you have to know that it's God's word. You have to know that it's God's will. God's word is God's will. Mark 11, 24 says, What things soever you desire when you pray. Say, when you pray. When you pray. What things soever you desire when you pray. Believe that you receive them, and then you will have them. We have to believe that we have the promise of God before we actually see that we have it. In other words, I have to believe that I have it before I'll ever get it. I have to believe I have it now before I'll ever get it. How can you do that? By believing God's Word. But you have to know it's God's Word. You know, it was very easy. I have somebody said, man, you got a lot of faith to start that church. And, and we started with nothing. We started the church with nothing. And we just stepped out on obeying God. When you're obeying God, it becomes very easy. Yes. When you know it's God, yes. then it's easy to believe God. Yes. Amen. It's easy to do what God says when you absolutely know it's God. That's why it's so important to meditate on the word day and night and observe to do all that's written therein. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you'll have good success. When you get the word of God so big in you that you know that's God. When you know that you know that you know that Jesus took your infirmities and he bare your sickness and with his stripes you were healed. When you know that, when you know it's God's will, then it's easy to believe God. Amen. It's Amen. easy. But you've got to get the word big Thank in you. Lord. Yes, Lord. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a faith preacher. He lived a long time ago. But he had a friend that he'd been teaching faith to. And his friend didn't have any feet. But one day he walked up to his friend and he, and he said, you don't have enough faith. And he said, what do you mean? He said, he said if you had faith, you'd have feet. And now that's pretty, that's pretty hard, yeah. you know, tell somebody that. Yeah. And the guy got offended by it. And he, he left in a rage. And then he got to thinking about it. You see, faith believes you have it, even though you can't see that you have it. And so Smith Wigglesworth told him, if you had faith, you would have went and got some shoes. That's what he told him. And so the guy was mad at him. But finally he got to thinking about it. He thought, you know what? He was right. If I really believed I had my feet, I'd go get me some shoes. So he went to a shoe store and ordered some shoes. And he said, stick them on those stubs. And they stuck them on those stubs. And he got up and started trying to walk around in those, on those stubs and those shoes. And feet grew into those shoes. Now, I wasn't there, but I believe that was a true story. Amen. I believe that's true. It's in his book. He wrote it. Amen. Thank I believe. You. I believe it's true. Thank you, Lord. But we can see miraculous things if we'll step out in the Word of God. You know, Peter. He said to Jesus. Jesus was walking on the water, and he thought they thought he was a spirit or a ghost. And so Peter said, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come onto the water with you. And so Jesus said, Come. Jesus said, Come. That's all he said. Come. But Peter, on that one word, he stepped out of the boat and he started walking on the water. And something happened. You know, the seas roared. The, the waves got big. The Bible says he became afraid. Fear hit him. Fear will bankrupt your faith every time. That's why Jesus told people, fear not, fear not, fear not. Only have faith. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. Amen. Only have faith. But if we get our eyes off Jesus, we'll, we'll flounder. We will sink. If you get your eyes off the word, that's when you begin to fail. We need to keep our eyes fixed on the light. We need to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. If we get our eyes off Jesus, we'll stumble and we'll, we'll fall. But if we'll keep our eyes on Jesus, we can never fall. 
We can't. The Bible says so. It says, if we will do these things, you'll never fall. We'll do, keep walking in love, we'll never fall. If we'll keep doing what the Word says, we'll never fall. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Now turn with me to uh, turn with me to uh, 